and the biggest national rail strikes in 30 fucking years this rail strike is happening in the fucking uk right now that's right let's take a look at what's happening it's a fucking strike on the fucking tube mate strike is one of the uk's largest for years and it's being led by one union every worker in this country deserves to negotiate a pay rise see a side cop at birth went in a totally different direction okay Went in a totally different direction. And bargain on their conditions. Because if you're not bargaining for a strong trade union, you're begging. The RMT is bargaining on behalf of thousands of workers. They're employed by the companies that operate the trains and by Network Rail, which maintains the infrastructure. And the RMT says it's time for a pay rise. It wants to be clear, this isn't about train drivers. Most of them belong to a different union. This, it says, is for signalers, cleaners and many others. Members who are not high earners. For example, train guards earn between 23 and 36,000 pounds, track maintenance workers between 16 and 34,000. To put that in context, the median pay for all employees in the UK was close to 26,000 pounds last year. And the RMT says its members deserve more. Our members haven't had a pay rise for up to three years. So inflation is now 11.1% on the RPI scale. There's two years ahead of that where they've not had a pay deal. They are getting poorer. We should add- How the fuck does anyone survive in England with that wage? First of all, that wage is a relatively decent one for England. Remember that they have like, uh, um, remember that they have uh, uh, way more amenities that are covered by the fucking government. So that's why a lot of the fucking salaries in the UK are lower across the board than the salaries that you would see in the United States. No, don't say, I mean, what, what do you mean? No, it absolutely is not. It's still low. It's still incredibly low for the record. I'm not saying that it's like high, but the average wage is. Um, the average wage in, in the UK, I think, is like lower across the board in the United States, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Am I wrong about this? It's like 40k USD and they get healthcare and a bunch of stuff in the USA that uh, in that the people in the USA don't and they have public transit not a not as much as a over reliance on housing they just said the average is 26k whatever is still higher than what I make Lamount You're phrasing it weirdly but they have less expenses to contend with like healthcare insurance and also cost of living is, is lower outside of, yes, places south of England, uh, probably London and other places uh, besides uh, London and other places south of England is lower. In May 2019, the RMT did secure a pay deal for some of its members. As for inflation, it is high. But Boris Johnson says that's a reason to show restraint. If wages continually chase the increase in prices, then we risk a wage price spiral. The FT defines a wage spiral. The median is 26K, which isn't actually the average, but that is lower than the United States median. Stop comparing. No, I'm, I'm talking to Americans, for the most part, that don't understand. Am I wrong? What is the, the U.S. and the... Never mind. I'm so fucking wrong. Uh, in the United States, the yearly... Wait, no, I'm not wrong, actually. Yeah, it's uh, in the United States, the median income, the yearly income uh, for median, the median yearly wage is $51,000. Bit of nerve. Dumbasses don't understand what 26 quid is in US dollars. That's 26K pounds and not dollars. Yes. The median wage in the UK is across the board lower than the United States of America. That is even after you. Uh, that is even after you you uh, put it in dollar values. Okay, it's still incredibly low and should be higher. Do not misunderstand me, oi bravs. Okay, and I am in favor of raising that. Obviously, however, having said that. 
The United States has a higher median wage than they do, than uh, the Oibrovs do. Part of the reason why the United States has a higher uh, uh, median wage than the Oibrovs do is also because of the less, uh, because of costs that they don't need to contend with, as, a, as another trader uh, pointed out. Okay. Spiralers, when workers demand pay rises to match higher living costs, and then companies raise prices to protect their margins, to protect their profits. The FT says it repeats a self-fulfilling process. Unions counter this idea, arguing that energy prices are pushing up inflation, not wages. Now, that analysis is disputed, but the government accepts that wages, in this case, should rise. No one is suggesting there's some kind of pay freeze required here. We all want to see a sensible pay increase. But of course, there are different- So the reason why I mentioned this, and what is the, what is the average salary for the railway workers? It, look, they have a pretty solid union, okay? And because of that really solid fucking union that they have, they have done strikes like this in the past. It's one of the famous stories that I've talked about it, with respect to non-unionized workers in other fucking workplaces in the UK routinely fucking shitting on uh, striking workers uh, and, and, um, and saying that they're already making so much money. They're making more money than the fucking, uh, than the average salaryman, okay? And the reason why they're able to make uh, a decent wage in comparison to other, uh, other sectors is because they have a solid fucking union. And the reason why it's very frustrating, the reason why I use this as an example all the time, and the reason why I mentioned the fucking differences in wages in general, um, is because I need you to understand that. I want to set up a fucking frame of reference for you if you're living in the United States of America to understand uh, why people will uh, come out with like severe anti-union propaganda in a situation like this. Okay. The government is saying that they are going to bring in agency workers. My question to you is, I'm guessing that your, some of your members will still stay on the picket lines. What will they do if agency workers try to cross those picket lines? Well, we will picket them. What do you think we'll do? We run a picket line and we'll ask them not to go to work. Do you not know how a picket well, line works? What do they do anyway? I very much know how a picket line works. I'm much older than I look, uh, Mr Lynch. Uh, what, will we, <laughs> what will picketing involve? Dude, dude, that's how you see that fucking Rupert Murdoch shit, dude. Yo, the media oftentimes is able to get away with not showcasing how fucking nefariously anti-worker it is in the United States of America because we don't have robust unions and there's not a lot of fucking union activity, okay? Union activity is supposed to be disruptive. Work stoppages are supposed to be disruptive. That's the only way to demonstrate your power. That's the only power the worker has is to strike and do a work stoppage uh, in, 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 and engage in this kind of collective action. That's literally the entire fucking weapon of the union, okay? So because that doesn't usually happen in the United States, the media doesn't actually fucking showcase exactly how reactionary and against the union and against working class individuals they are, okay? But right now it's happening in the UK and you immediately see how fucking aggro they are. Oh, uh, uh, well, what, what are you going to do in the picket line? Are you going to beat them up? What are you going to do about scabs? Well, you can see what picketing involves. I can't believe this line of questioning. Picketing is standing outside the workplace to try and encourage people who want to go to work not to go to work. What else do you think it involves? And what if they want... Well, I just wondered what else it might involve, because I very well remember uh, the picket lines well, where, of the 1980s, where are you going with your... Mr Lynch. I'm asking you which what your members you would about? do, Mr. Which, Lynch. Which picket lines are you talking uh, the about? The minor strikes. Minor strikes. Yeah. What does it look like, the minor strikes? <laughs> what no, are you talking Mr. about? Lynch, she's and I'm just asking, off, I'm just to clarify. She's, gone off in she's saying, are you guys going to be violent? That's what she's saying. What are you going to do to the scabs? Are you going to beat them up? Are you going to beat them up? Are you going to beat up the scabs? Uh, fucking uh, a Tory ass uh, line of questioning. I'm the just trying to clarify. Surreal. Uh, no, Ms. Lynch, and I'm about? sorry if you feel the need to ridicule me, but I'm just asking you what you expect your members yeah, to your do if are, agency are, are workers... your questions into the nonsense. I'm I wonder if they'll hit him with the fucking look at how sexist he is kind of take. You know what I mean? Oh, he's downright being sexist to a female anchor.
It was just doing a fucking job asking fucking questions, bruv. He must hate women. We'll pick it as effectively no, as we can. And what does that involve? <laughs> Look, there it is. That's what it involves. So you won't stop age you won't stop agency workers crossing the picket line. We will try to stop agency workers crossing <laughs> the picket line by asking them not to go to work. What is it you're suggesting we will and if do? They, I'm just asking you. I'm trying to clarify we'll for the benefit of the British public. Clar yeah, the unions are against the British public. Motherfucker, who is comprised of the union? What do you think? You think like fucking uh, the people that are working the fucking tube are just not a part of the fucking working class for some reason? Is that what you think? And that's precisely what they're going to do. That's why I was trying to fucking talk about the salary disparity or the differences in salary for the UK so you guys understand and you're not caught off fucking guard when you hear a narrative that has been mentioned time and time again in prior fucking strikes that like these guys already make a lot of money for not doing a lot of work. How dare they fucking take time off? How dare they fucking strike? They're such uh, stubborn and spoiled pieces of shit is exactly the fucking argument, the narrative that the media is going to collectively craft and a bunch of dumbass, uh, uh, dumbass working class fucking British people are going to go along with that as they have in the past. So that's the reason why I wanted to under, uh, help you understand what their salary looks like, what the average salary looks like, what the median salary looks like in comparison to the American salaries so that you don't look at it and go, well, what do you mean? 51,000? Like, that's not, that's not a lot. No, like, that is actually more than the average uh, uh, British worker does. A full-time uh, a train conductor in the UK is actually making more money than the average worker, which is precisely why other British people look at that and go, that's fucked up. How dare they fucking strike? They already are making more money than I do. Okay? However, so far, so far, that has not had staying power. The majority have said that the rail strikes this week are justified. Okay? Which is unique. And the media hasn't, the media has not gotten through uh, uh, to the public yet. They are just starting. Okay? That sets the bar so low, that take. I'm just letting you understand. I'm letting you try to, I'm trying to get you to understand. 18 to 34, absolutely justified. 45% of 18 to 34 year olds say somewhat justified. That's right, brav. Labor is a 34%. Uh, uh, support for the striking uh, workers in this circumstance, except uh, once again, 34% uh, say absolutely justified, 45% say somewhat justified. Who doesn't think? <laughs> Who doesn't think uh, uh, it's justified in the Labour Party? In a gritty promotional video for his 2020 labor leader, uh, later leadership bid, Keir Starmer called himself a proud trade unionist. As RMT members prepared to walk out on the first of the three days of industrial action this week, however, Starmer made clear not only that he would not be observing this particular industrial dispute at close quarters, but he expected his front bench team to stay away too. Does Starmer think that... What, what, is, what does he think labor means? That it's the name of your party. What, what, do you, what do you think that means? Do you think labor stands for something different? That's what labor stands for, you fucking pig, you donkey. What the fuck is wrong with you? But what do you expect from this bumbling buffoon who also flubbed one of the greatest fucking media opportunities in the form of Boris Johnson routinely fucking up? Classic fucking Democrat bullshit, okay? Literally. Just awful. Awful piece of shit. It's like, it's like he's deliberately fucking destroying uh, the Labour Party. Good job. 
Good job to everybody. BBC trying to convince us people are against the strikes. Rail strikes, the passengers who fear they will miss life events. Oh, no. Shocking. Shocking. Dastardly. It won't come. Um, anyway, I don't think anyone in the U.S. We've definitely lost working rights since the introduction of the zero-hour contracts. The, the reason why these fucking strikes are happening is because they want better pay. Different definitions of sensible. This is Simon Clark's. The U.S. and U.K. are closer than you think when you're saying median income. U.S. median income is only 35K. Linked I thought the that, U.S. median income was higher than... Some of the practices that make our railway a very unsustainable entity at the moment. We, ha we have to recognize that... Uh, the way that our, our rail network operates is not fit for the 2020s. Now, pay proposals have been made. The RMT wants a 7% rise. Network Rail is offered 2% with a further 1% to come. The RMT rejected that. Though it accepts that restructuring is necessary, it adds, we've got to have an assurance that the people who are working there today won't come out of that worse off than they went in. And while the union wants assurances, so too do the train operating companies. We really require details uh, and acceptance that reform can go ahead. And then that allows us to then work on how do we get a settlement for our staff. The company saves some reform have to be accepted before an offer is made. But the RMT has a further concern. They have a plan to cut thousands of jobs off the railway network between network rail and the train operators. We think that that threatens the safety regimes on our railway because they have to cut the maintenance regimes in order to cut the jobs. These safety concerns, though, are not accepted by the employers. We do need to reduce the number of people that work for Network Rail, uh, because that's one of the key ways that we can be more efficient and save money. We know we can do that safely. And so we have a government demanding reduced budgets and modernisation, employers seeking to deliver that, and unions saying this is neither safe nor fair. And the context is I wonder who we should side with that. The fucking Tory government that is like instituting all of these budget cuts across the fucking board, even though Boris Johnson literally ran on refunding the NHS, as a matter of fact, after nine years of austerity and people genuinely complaining about the fucking lack of funding for the NHS and even this as well. Or the uh, the 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 fucking, you know, uh, striking rail uh, railway workers. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who to who to trust in this one. Um, hmm. So selfish. The pandemic. We committed £16 billion pounds to support the railways through COVID. As a result, the trains continued to operate. The industry survived. Not a single railway worker had to be furloughed or lost their job, not one. It's true, the government did support the railways through the pandemic. The question is... What should happen now? Especially because COVID... Damn, that's crazy, bro. That's wild. I can't believe they supported the railway, uh, the, the railway workers through the pandemic. That's wild. No, oh, my God, dude. It, it, okay. Wow. Wow, so fucked up, dude. That's crazy. They, I can't believe that. But it's changed how we travel. Passenger numbers are down by a fifth, in part because of working from home. Fewer journeys mean lower revenue, especially on commuter routes like this one. And this is the government's plan. Modernise the railways. Make it more productive and get the industry of taxpayer funded life support. To which the RMT argues that COVID's become a smokescreen for job cuts that were planned all along. And though the RMT... Privatisation is part of the reason why the fucking railways have been ineffective and inefficient. But that is not a surprise for anyone that's watching this broadcast at the very least. Uh, that is quite literally uh, some of the worst lines are fucking private ones in the UK and uh, obviously one of the things that they need to be doing is actually funded further and renationalize but they're not doing that uh, which is because you know uh, capitalism is one and they're they're destroying every fucking facet of comfortable existence in the country it's great RMT and the government are trading statements in public they're not actually directly negotiating the union is talking to the employers Though it says in reality, the Treasury in particular is calling the shots. And the opposition Labour Party says this. Not only are they boycotting the talks, they're actually hobbling them. And therefore, that's why it is imperative that they step in. The government denies a boycott, but it is declining to intervene.
it's not, it's not the case that we're going to sit around uh, the table directly with the trade unions because that's not how uh, the government ought to be behaving here. We're not the legal employer. To Labour's leader, though, this is a political ploy. I don't want... It's just weird because, like, also simultaneously, they are taking a position on it. Their inaction in this circumstance would be taking a position, especially in a country like the UK. And if I'm not mistaken, they could, like, literally fucking not only institute train fare uh, price controls, but also renationalize uh, uh, railroads. Like, there's plenty of things that they could do as they are not like the United States. If you're in the U.S., you're like, of course, they're, they can't do anything. They're the government. The government doesn't do shit, right? Like, obviously, they're not going to do anything. But in the U.K., they do have a history of doing things. And the people do have an expectation that the government should do things. So, for the record, like, they could be doing something, but they're not. And uh, why would they when the fucking Labour Party is not even using this as an opportunity to fucking spear dick the narrative uh, and, and uh, put forward a tangible policy position that in my opinion, is not necessarily that difficult of, of one that, to, to put forward. I want the strikes to go ahead, but he does. He wants, Mr. Speaker, he wants the country to grind to a halt so he can feed off the division. The government what? denies this too. And there are also questions for Labour. Which party in this dispute are you backing? Well, we're backing a deal. We want to see the dispute avoided, and it can be. My colleague Nick Edley's looked at Labour too. Is it backing the striking rail workers, Nick asks? There's been no definite answer. How much is a fair pay rise, he asks. That's for the negotiations, the party says. And in these negotiations, there are profound tests for the government and its stated commitment to a high-wage economy, for Labour and its relationship with the unions, for the rail employers and their efforts to run a business with changing travel habits and for the union and the leverage it has. Bro, it's kind of wild to be the Labour Party and be like, yeah, we're going to take a centrist position on a Labour dispute. Like how? how? You're literally like at least the Democrats are not like the Labour Party. You know what I mean? They're not called literally the Labour Party. That's insane. Like, it's the, the title. It's the sticker. It's on there. It's in the fucking... It's in the name. What are you doing? To clarify, the state still owns slash runs the rails themselves as under private hands. Fuck loads of people were killed. But they give private operators monopolies on routes, so renationalization would just be a case of not contracting private train companies anymore. They just choose not to. They're trying to avoid being blamed and smeared by the Tories for it, I think. They want it to be the Tories' problem, a mess. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. It's not, uh, that's, that's bullshit, okay? Advocating to solve this problem, which will be solved, especially considering how powerful of a fucking union uh, the, the, uh, the railroads are, the railroad union is, you should, I don't know, uh, take advantage of that. It's more popular within your fucking party than you are, Keir Starmer, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's just bad politics. Centrists, once again, doing not only bad policy, but also bad politics, okay? That's the worst part about it. That's why I always talk about the fucking Democrats with so much disdain, because they never forget the top of the hour ad break, and sometimes I forget the top of the hour ad break, and I tell you 12 minutes into the top of the hour that there's a top of the hour ad break right now. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is fucking subscribe. For five dollars, for five quid, bro, or for fucking free, yeah, with a Twitch Prime, that is, that's right, it's fucking mental. Thank, thank you, Hunter Free, for the ten gifted subs and drop the gigawatt with the five gifted subs, allowing... 15 fucking total people to no longer see the ads. Thank you, Speed Razor. Well, the 10 gifted subs, yeah. Here's the one minute ad break now. That's fucking right, brav. Okay, so as I was saying, as I was saying, though, it's, it's free 99. It's four quid. <laughs> oh. Healy 1920 with a 50 gifted subs. Oi, brav.
Oh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. I have too much fun with this. Okay. Fine. If you keep being bravophobic, I might have to unfollow. Listen, 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 bruv. Listen, bruv. The 5G vaccine for QAnon teens. Thank, thank you for the five gifted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this video by Wendover. This